Hi, it's Louise, it's Viral Bright Insight. We have a full moon in Scorpio coming up next week, and this is going to be hot on the tails of the Jupiter Taurus conjunction. Now, this full moon is happening at four degrees, 17 minutes of Scorpio. And depending where you are in the world, it's going to hit on either the 23rd of April or the 24th. It's the 24th in the early hours for anyone in the UK and in Europe. So what exactly can we expect with this full moon? Well, before I go into detail, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer. I work with traditional astrology and also fixed stars and galactic astrology. So with these videos, I try and pull out some of the key themes that are coming forward with these astrological events and also map on to that the energies of the fixed stars and how the galactic energies are being activated through these events. So whenever we have a full moon, it is signifying the end of a cycle. In this case, it is the lunar cycle. So this full moon in many ways is finishing off eclipse season as we had the solar eclipse on the 8th of April. And I don't know about you, but certainly for me, I have had so much coming up in this two week period. And in keeping with the theme of eclipses in general, which are all about transformation, this full moon in Scorpio is going to really take us into the deep waters, into the depths of our psyche, and really hold space for some even deeper transformation. Now, Scorpio is a fixed water sign, and it is an incredibly emotional um, energy to work with. Scorpio wants us to go down deep below the surface and to really explore the underworld, to explore what is hidden. There are some really strong themes of life, death, rebirth, and transformation as Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. And it also um, brings up themes of secrets, being able to see what is hidden, along with issues and themes of power and control, both from the positive side, empowerment, and the more negative side, disempowerment. Scorpio is also a sign of elimination, where we are invited to shed layers that no longer serve us and really let go of things that, you know, we have possibly been carrying for many for many lifetimes even and as this is an emotional water sign you know this very much relates to emotions that have been long buried hidden really deep down in the dark this full moon is really going to give us an opportunity to shine a light on some of that which has been buried so that it can come up to be healed and certainly you know these themes are incredibly um relevant and pertinent to what I've been experiencing personally since the solar eclipse in particular. But really this full moon is an opportunity to be able to see in the dark. And that is a theme that is going to come through very strongly in the galactic astrology when I start to bring that into this video. But before we go into that, we're, we will look at what some of the other planets are doing and also the numbers as there's some relevance here. Now, the full moon is at four degrees and the number four is very much about boundaries, structure, foundation, a support system, if you like. And when I sort of feel into this four degree point of Scorpio and in terms of how it's playing out at the time of this full moon. It feels that as if there are some very deeply set boundaries and structures in place to hold the space for us. It may be unseen because Scorpio is very much about things that are buried, things that are underneath, beneath the surface. But when you tune in, I can feel that that is very much there. And it's it's like um, it's like a framework for change. 
supporting the transformation, holding the space, almost acknowledging how challenging it is and how we need that extra support. But it is very much holding us steady and giving us um, very strong protection. There is also um, the ruling planet of this lunation. Pluto is very activated because it is in a T-square being at two degrees of Aquarius, it forms a T-square with the sun and the moon. And Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius, we've talked about this energy a lot, certainly in recent videos and lots of other astrologers are talking about it as well. But Pluto and Aquarius brings through a really strong galactic energy that is supporting the full moon at this time. And whenever there's a fixed square, it does create tension because, you know, there is a case there is a feeling that something has to give but there is a bit of a standoff and um it can it's obviously going to create resistance but it is ultimately about growth and the fact that you cannot ignore a square they just they have to be dealt with they have to be faced up to so there's a real sense here with this t-square with pluto which is all about transformation and evolution and also very much about going deep and exposing what's being hidden and really digging down you know there is a, an acknowledgement that it is uncomfortable and that you know we are really having to face our fears because Pluto is linked to fear as is Scorpio we're having to let go of what we've thought we've known this is fixed energy as well so it is very much about forcing change where perhaps you know it feels less than comfortable to, to really do that and to go along with that and acknowledging that yes there is going to be resistance but there is no choice we have to make these changes we have to face what is lies in the dark what is hidden what is buried in order to be able to grow and it is through facing that it is through shining this light in the darkness that we can really um, start to acknowledge the emotions and the fears and the truth but through doing so, that is where the alchemy lies and that is where the true healing takes place. And this is very much in keeping with the energy of the eight, because we're in a universal eight year, which is all about power and control and sort of flow as above, so below that really sort of um, ha having a foot in both sides. So sort of spiritual and physical worlds and being able to create a bridge between them so that we can um, come into a much more um, aligned state of being with our higher selves but still very much acknowledging that we are here to do the work in the physical on the earth plane to make the changes on the earth as we do so the effect um, is, is, is like a mirror what happens in one state of being has an impact and influence in the other. So this is really very powerful stuff and it is not for the faint of heart. And you know, a lot of people will feel like they want to run and hide, but because Pluto is here playing this really strong part, there's no longer an opportunity to do that. It is very much time, you know, to face our fears square on as the sun shines a light on them. And sometimes, you know, the, the truth is that what we think is scary, when we actually look at it dead in the eye, we find that actually it isn't that scary at all. So there is an element of, you know, we have to let the discomfort, the fear rise within us and face it square on and find that actually, you know, in the light of day, it wasn't quite what we thought it was going to be. It wasn't as bad as we thought it it could be now the co-ruler co of this of this full moon is mars and mars is very much you know linked to warrior energy to um to anger to aggression but also to action to motivation to drive to passion and mars is in pisces at this time which is very much sort of giving us a real boost to finding our way in terms of our spiritual selves making what a stronger connection with our higher selves 
with all that is stepping into unity consciousness and also to some extent having the courage to step into the void to beyond the physical to really find out that, that there is so much power that lies when we do let go of everything. Pisces being a very karmic sign as well, the last sign in the zodiac. So this is much, very much about endings and letting go, which of course it comes up with the, um, the energy of the full moon and the end of the lunar cycle. We also have Mars in a opposition to Lilith in Virgo. Lilith representing the shadow um, where we feel rejected in this world. Lilith being the wild feminine side and a power that is rising up within us, seeking a voice, seeking to be heard, but ultimately that can never be put out. So Lilith is really taking us into of the physical realm through Virgo, but also relying very much on the higher perspective that Mars is able to bring to her, to bring that spiritual side, to bring that compassion through as well, through Pisces, to support us as we work through the shadows, which are being brought up through the Scorpio full moon. We have the North Node, which is conjunct Mercury retrograde in Aries. And this is very much about being able to and having the courage to go within and to tap into the knowledge and understanding and information that lies within each of us. And because this is a North Node activation, this is about our evolution. This is about where we need to go to be able to evolve and to reach our full soul potential. And so with Mer Mercury being the messenger here, still in retrograde motion, there is a very much um, the emphasis on reliance on the self and what we know to be true and to really step into um, what makes us unique and individual. And of course, we also have Jupiter conjunct Uranus. Jupiter will have moved past Uranus by the time the moon is full in Scorpio, but they are still extremely close. And please do go back and watch my Jupiter Uranus conjunction video if you want to find more about these energies. But this is um, sort of enhanced because Lilith is now in a trine to this conjunction. So Lilith trine Jupiter conjunct Uranus is really of giving her a boost in terms of support and giving her the courage and the freedom to really stand up and roar, to shriek, to shout, to really um, fight for our freedom. It's going to show us where we have been repressed potentially and where you know her power is being unleashed through this amazing conjunction and the energy that it's bringing. You know, I talked about in my last video about it feeling like a lightning bolt coming down from the sky, literally breaking through everything that has been fixed. And this is yet another part of that, where you know this um, amazing war cry of the divine feminine is really being heard at this time creating huge awakenings and showing us exactly where we have been held down and, you know, repressed, made to hide potentially. And of course, the Scorpio full moon is really shining a light on that as well. So there's some really powerful themes of transformation, of freedom, of awakening, but also the support of the sort of higher self and the more spiritual aspects as well coming through to guide us and to lead us forward as we sort of navigate these very um very challenging times but there's such strong pisces and scorpio you know bringing the water through you know this is compassion this is deeply healing this is very cleansing and very releasing but let's let's talk about the fixed star connections because this is a very galactic full moon in terms of what it is activating in the galactic chart. So we have Pluto in Aquarius is conjunct Altair and I have talked about that in previous videos. Altair 
in the Aquila constellation, Aquila being the eagle. So we have this opportunity through the transform transformative energies of Pluto to rise higher, to embrace courage, to really see things from a much higher and different perspective. You know, this is very much warrior energy, rising up, taking control, being sovereign, using the courage that is available through the energies of this, this fixed star to really fight, but to fight for a just cause and to see things that perhaps were not visible before when we were sort of further down on the ground. But again, you know, again, this is a really key theme, being able to see what we've not seen before, being able to see in the dark. Now, the co-ruler Mars is also highly activated. And this is through two stars, one being Markab in the Pegasus constellation. Now, Pegasus is the winged horse. So this brings through, again, themes of freedom, of flight, of being able to rise up and see the bigger picture. Pegasus is very much linked to way shower and pathfinder energy. It's also very much about breaking free from the chains that have bound us and giving us access to other dimensions as well. So insight and energies from other dimensions and other planes of existence. But also, Markab always makes me um, think of, sort of that steady um, energy, holding space, holding some sort of order amid the chaos, which again comes back to the four energy that I was talking about before. So when Markab is in a chart, there is very much a sense of, you know, we are being led to or guided to trust the chaos and stay calm within the midst of crisis and everything shifting and changing around us and trusting in the knowledge and understanding and the belief that there is order, divine order within all chaos in our lives and in the universe. So it is giving us this steady framework by which to sort of um, to hold us steady, to hold us stable and protect us. Now, the other star that is being activated by Mars is one of the stars in the Phoenicis or Phoenix constellation. And this is the Delta star in the Phoenix constellation. And this is bringing through some, again, incredible themes, incredible energies. Now, the Phoenix energy is all about resurrection. It is about immortality it is about being burnt down you know in flames only to rise again from the ashes which is very scorpionic in nature and also with the phoenix you know being able to take flight being able to um access you know some of the darkest places to transmute the energy and to bring new life and to really come in and save the day you know, this is regeneration, this is transmutation, this is alchemy at its finest. And the fact that Mars is here activating this energy, you know, it is very much using that as from a warrior perspective um, and a warrior for justice, but using it from a very spiritual and compassionate angle as well through the Pisces energy. And just to add to that, we also have Saturn. Saturn is exactly conjunct anchor, which is the alpha star in the Phoenix constellation. Saturn, you know, really talking about mastery of energy, about responsibility. Yes, in its lower expression, Saturn can be very restrictive and very limiting. But actually, for me, in this case, it feels like mastery and authority and really taking charge. So again, activating the Phoenix energy from Saturn's point of view as well at the time of this full moon. So those, those are the ruling planets. Now we have um, the moon itself is conjunct the Shapely or Shapley attractor, which is the most powerful cosmic point that we look at in galactic astrology. And for me, this point is really the epitome of truth and integrity. And when the Shapley attractor is active, activated in a chart, of course, conjunct the moon in this chart in a square to Pluto, there is no 
um, there is no place for anything that is not of the highest good and the highest truth and the highest integrity. So anything that is out of alignment with that, the energy cannot exist. It has to fall. It has to um, fade. It has to be dissolved. It has to be transmuted. It doesn't really feel like a dissolving energy. It feels like, you know, a complete cutting out <laughs> if, you know, when I feel into it. But, you know, this is eliminating and shedding anything that is not um, of truth. So masks are falling, curtains are being pulled back. We're being able to see beyond the veil. And with the Shapley Attractor, we have this, um, this sight, this ability to see things that perhaps we weren't able to see before, which again, you know, with this full moon in Scorpio, again, the themes just keep repeating time and time again as we look at all the different aspects they all come back to the same theme the same point the same um the same purpose of this moon the moon is also in the trine to Fomalhaut, which is one of the royal stars and this is very angelic in energy and um, very creative energy linked to communication and archangel gabriel again bringing through christ consciousness which is compassion unity and when this star is active um, there is a link also to the Essenes with this particular fixed star yes it is acknowledging that suffering and victimhood is part of the human experience it is part of our growth it's what we often have to experience and move through to be able to grow and achieve what it is that we've come here to achieve but it is also about being able to see the light in the dark and being able to see the light within others. It's often that we see the light in other people before we are able to see it in ourselves. But again, you know, with this beautiful archangelic energy, it feels like Fomalhaut is holding space for this whole process to unfold and to unravel. Now we have Jupiter and Uranus are both still in opposition to Hadar in the Beta Centauri constellation. So again, you know, this is an opposition, so the energy isn't fully integrated, but it feels, as I explained in my last video, that this energy, which is very much linked to compassion, to unity, to nature, to unconditional love, that that again is being held for us, that is, this star is holding space while all this chaos, while all this, um, disruption takes place in order to shake us out of the ways that we have become fixed we have this beautiful hadarian energy sort of holding the space to shining its light across to us so that we can really absorb those beautiful frequencies and really um give us the hope and the optimism to be able to move through this crisis and this chaos and these times of deep change that we are experiencing so the nodes mercury and the sun are all being activated by stars in the andromedan constellation so we have the north node and mercury conjunct alpha rats we have the sun still in a conjunction to mirat although it is um, moving away from that star now so you know these are themes of deep transformation of freedom of great wisdom and knowledge and being able to adapt to an ever-changing landscape. And just one, just one final cosmic point to bring in, the nodes are in a trine to the Great Attractor and Saturn is squaring the Great Attractor. Now, the Great Attractor is another very powerful cosmic point. And this is um, very magnetic energy, but it is transmitting consciousness, much higher consciousness. And perhaps, you know, we've had access before. It's giving us a real boost. It's elevating our understanding. It's elevating the energies. It's allowing us to see behind the scenes to really understand what's going on from a very different and more awakened and enlightened perspective. And it is pulling us back to source energy, which is ultimately who and what we are. So the trines are very supportive so the trying to the north node you know this is energy that we need that is really beneficial to help us grow to push us out of our comfort zones to push us into new ways of being to new understanding through aries being the pioneer the leadership energy 
the start of something new and with the square to Saturn it's acknowledging that with Saturn you know it is a time to really step up to do the work to it's almost like a coming of age energy with Saturn and through Saturn so this is about maturity it's about mastery it's about doing the work and reaping the rewards and understanding that although things never come particularly or necessarily easy the rewards are always worth it so as with always, there are many other aspects and fixed stars that I haven't brought in, but I try and pick out what is sort of standing out the most to me. But this is a very potent, very powerful lunation, which feels very timely coming so soon after the Great Conjunction. And I think I feel that we're going to have this time where everything is potentially ripped apart or shocked apart in some way whether that's physical whether that's spiritual emotional or mental it, it remains to be seen but this full moon in Scorpio is really going to help us to work through any emotions that come up as a part as through that and when you know the fixed earth is being ripped apart so that we can then access the deep emotions that are trapped within and they can come up to be healed to be resolved to be soothed to be cleansed to be transmuted and to be alchemized so very deeply healing full of transformation yes full of change full of growth potentially very intense because scorpio is intense but scorpio wants us to evolve wants us to transform and wants us to change for the better and this is all part of the process so thank you so much for watching. You can find out about my work at spiralbright.co.uk. Please do sign up for my mailing list if you're interested in galactic astrology, star seeds and soul astrology. And I look forward to um, sharing more with you very soon.